This video is made possible by my wonderful Patreon community and my YouTube channel members. Thank you so much. I know I say that every new Watchtower magazine is the cultiest one yet, but guys, they just keep getting worse. This is the May 2024 Watchtower, and it solidifies the doctrinal changes that were released in last year's annual meeting. Check out this compilation if you want to catch up with all the changes. Today, we are going to learn why Jehovah's Witnesses should remain in the preaching hamster wheel despite the recent changes that have been made to the ministry. Yeah, it's about to get culty. You know we're doing the cringe challenge, so if you cringe, you lose. And when you cringe, please let me know the exact moment you lost it. Are you ready? Let's go. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. The first article is titled, Trust in the Merciful Judge of All the Earth. And it's a recap of David's Plains talk, in which he admitted that we cannot know for sure who is going to be resurrected. Will everyone who died in Sodom and Gomorrah sleep an everlasting sleep? The women, the children, babies. We don't have the answer to those questions. Will the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah be resurrected? Possibly. Although the book of Jude says that they're devoted to everlasting fire, but <clears throat> let's ignore that verse. Will the victims of the global flood be resurrected? Maybe. Since Noah didn't have a chance to preach to every single person, were all the children that were brutally murdered in the conquest of Canaan be allowed to enter paradise? We just don't know. Wait a minute. Did I hear that right? We don't have the answer to, to those questions? I thought we did. We just don't know. The fact that God destroyed these people in the past doesn't mean he wanted them dead forever. It was more like a timeout. An extremely violent timeout. This is all very, very silly. But the governing body loves to speculate on the most nonsensical things. Now take a look at this picture where Jehovah's Witness is teaching the resurrected ones about modern watchtower theology. <laughs> so if almost every person who has ever lived is going to be resurrected, how do you expect 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses to convert all of them in less than a thousand years while they're busy rebuilding the earth? How are you going to print Bibles for them if modern infrastructure just collapsed? After our Don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. So after all this talk about not being dogmatic on who's going to be resurrected, you would expect Watchtower to avoid dictating who's not going to be resurrected, but no, they do the complete opposite. Judas Iscariot is not going to be resurrected. Some Pharisees from Jesus' day are also dead forever. And apostates as well. And the Apostle Paul warned that unrepentant apostates would not be resurrected. And the article ends with a reminder that we need to leave the final judgment to Jehovah and JC because they're the only perfect judges. But didn't you just say that apostates will not be resurrected? Isn't that like passing judgment on them? <laughs> we shouldn't be dogmatic about who will and who will not be resurrected unrepentant apostates would not be resurrected. We just don't know. Guys, this entire article can be summarized with one simple sentence. We don't know shit, but we still expect you to listen, obey, and donate. We shouldn't be dogmatic. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? Article number two. What do we know about Jehovah's future judgments? This article is quite interesting because Watchtower acknowledges bright and clear that their preaching efforts will probably not reach all people on the earth. Millions of people today live in areas where the preaching work is severely restricted. In addition, hundreds of babies are born every minute. We do our best to reach people from every nation and tribe and tongue with the good news. Revelation 14.6 but the fact is that we will not be able to share the good news with each individual on earth before the end comes. Well duh, of course they won't. You're not even remotely close to preaching to all people. So how will these people be saved in Armageddon? If they don't even have access to 
learn about Jehovah's Witnesses? Thus a question arises. What about those who may not have a chance to hear the good news before the Great Tribulation strikes? How will Jehovah and His Son, whom He has entrusted to do the judging, deal with them? The theme text of this article states that Jehovah does not desire anyone to be destroyed. Instead, He wants all to attain to repentance. That said, we must acknowledge that Jehovah has not yet revealed to us what He will do in answer to this question. Of course, He is not obligated to tell us anything about what He has done or will do. What? Jehovah hasn't revealed it to you? Then why have you written an entire article on the matter? Just admit you don't know jack shit and move on. Then we get this photo of groups of people who have never ever heard of Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, the vast majority of the Muslim world, the entire population of China and North Korea, and all the remote tribes scattered around the world. Will all who die during the events of the Great Tribulation be destroyed forever with no hope of a resurrection? The scriptures make it clear that outright opposers whom Jehovah and his forces will destroy at Armageddon will not be resurrected. But what about others, for example, who may die from natural causes, from accidents, or at the hand of other humans? Could some of these people be among the unrighteous who will be resurrected in the new world? We simply do not know. Well, this seems to be the new Watchtower mantra. We just don't know. We don't know. And we don't need to know because we're not the judges. It's above our pay grade. What a drastic turn of events for a religion that prided itself in pretending to know every little detail about the end times. Paragraph 12 and 13 are taken directly from Jeffrey Jackson's talk, where he claims that people can repent last minute after they see the fall of false religion, Babylon the Great, which kind of destroys the entire point of being a Jehovah's Witness, since you can now survive Armageddon by repenting last minute, you can live your entire life without following these silly rules, and then once you see that the end is imminent, you can just convert back. So there's no point in being a Jehovah's Witness anymore. And the picture here just reaches new insane levels of absurdity. Some who will see the destruction of Babylon the Great will recall that Jehovah's Witnesses had long spoken of this event. And the picture description is even funnier. A young woman who left the truth remembers that she learned about the destruction of Babylon the Great. She has a change of heart and returns to her Christian parents. If such developments occur, we want to reflect the merciful and compassionate personality of our Heavenly Father and rejoice that a sinner has returned. Uh, first of all, thanks for calling me sinner, I guess. Second, what's up with this ambiguous news segment? Governments order shutdown of religious activities? Um, which governments? All of them? Like, even the theocracies? And what do you mean by shutdown? Are they like closing places of worship? Are they cracking down on worshippers themselves? Are they rewriting their constitutions? Of course, Watchtower needs to keep the scenario as vague as possible because the more you think about it, the more silly it becomes. So now it seems that believing parents will have to wait anxiously for the destruction of false religion so that their prodigal sons and daughters come back running to the cult. Too bad that this event is never going to happen. It is also reasonable to conclude that a person's eternal future does not depend on where he happens to live. It is unthinkable that Jehovah would automatically label as goats millions of people who live in lands where they never had an opportunity to respond to the kingdom message. Yes, yes, this is what we've been saying all this time. A loving God would never destroy billions of people for the crime of being born in the wrong place at the wrong time and not being able to hear the Jehovah's Witness message. That would just be cruel. A loving God would never do that. And Watchtower is barely coming to that realization, the same realization that apostates have been sharing for all of this time. So the question remains, 
If it's impossible to preach to all people, and God is a merciful judge who will find a way to save the unbelievers in difficult lands, then what's the point of the preaching work? Oh wait, 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 I forgot to show you this picture of a bunch of Armageddon survivors walking away with their clothes neatly cleaned and pressed, as if they didn't just come out of the greatest tribulation in human history. Watchtower just keeps remaking these pictures over and over of people like walking away from the destroyed world, and it's just a silly every time. At the 2023 annual meeting, we received thrilling clarifications on some of our beliefs, and we heard some exciting announcements about our ministry. We learned, for example, that some individuals may have an opportunity to side with Jehovah's people even after Babylon the Great is destroyed. We also learned that as of November 2023, Kingdom Publishers would no longer be asked to report all their activity in the ministry. Do such changes make our ministry less important, less urgent than before? Yes. Absolutely not. Yes, they do. With each passing day, our ministry becomes more urgent. Why? Because time is running out. Consider what Jesus foretold about the preaching work in the last days. According to Matthew's parallel account, Jesus said that the good news would be preached in all the inhabited earth before the end comes. That expression refers to the complete end of Satan's wicked system of things. Jehovah has set the day and hour for the events that will soon unfold. Each day brings us one day closer to that time. Meanwhile, we must keep preaching until the end comes. Oh boy, time is running out, will soon unfold. Each day brings us one day closer to that time. These are the same old tired lines that we've been hearing for decades now. But if the preaching work is more important than ever before, why in the world did Watchtower end the hour requirement for publishers? If you want your followers to display a sense of urgency, the last thing you want to do is to take away the hour requirement. It makes no sense. We preach because we love people. Like Jehovah and his son, we love people. We feel deep compassion for those who are without God and who have no hope. Ephesians 2.12 They are drowning in life's problems, and we have the life vest that they need, the good news of God's kingdom. Our love and compassion for such ones motivates us to make every effort to reach them with the good news. That precious message can fill their hearts with hope, help them find the best possible life now, and give them the prospect of the real life, everlasting life, in God's new world. Watchtower always uses the lifeboat analogy or the burning building analogy when speaking about the preaching work, but these analogies actually show that most JWs don't even believe in their own doctrine. Because if someone truly believed that God is about to destroy all unbelievers really soon, they would be using every waking hour to warn their neighbors. And if Watchtower truly believed that the end is so close, they would have never gotten rid of the hour requirement and they would not be investing so much time and money on construction projects. It's like part of them subconsciously knows that it's all bullshit. I, uh, I think I can smell shite. As explained in the preceding article, it may be Jehovah's will to save people who have a change of heart when they see the destruction of Babylon the Great. If so, then it is all the more urgent that we keep sounding the warning. Consider this. What we tell them now may give them something to remember then. Perhaps they will reflect back on the warning they heard from us and be moved to join us in pure worship before it is too late. Like the jailer in Philippi who had a change of heart only after a great earthquake occurred, perhaps some who do not respond now will have a change of heart after the world-shaking destruction of Babylon the Great. So that is the reason Watchtower is using to justify the preaching work. The idea is if we warn people now, once the Great Tribulation starts, they're going to remember that JWs predicted the end of Babylon the Great and then they will convert. Well, Watchtower, let me propose an idea for you. How about instead of using very 
inefficient methods of preaching, like neighborhood canvassing and standing next to literature cards, you instead used all that donated money you have and invested in advertising. Yeah, all you have to do is launch a huge advertising campaign that tells people that the end of false religion is near. The billboards could say, hey, we predict the world's governments will turn on all religions and destroy them very soon. And once you see this sign, convert to our religion. Wouldn't that be infinitely more efficient in spreading your message than, you know, sending people door to door? I think it would. But the thing is, Watchtower doesn't even believe in their own doctrine. Because again, if the preaching work was more important than ever before, they would have never rolled back on the hour requirement. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's true. What exciting prospects lie ahead of us. With Jehovah's blessing, we hope to see many more accept the truth before the Great Tribulation begins. Also, we are thrilled at the possibility that even during the darkest time in human history, the Great Tribulation, we may see still more people turn away from Satan's dying world and join us in praising Jehovah. What then are we determined to do? Motivated by love, love for the good news, love for people, and above all, love for Jehovah God in His name, we will keep preaching with eagerness, urgency, and zeal until Jehovah says it is enough. I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. I just can't take this anymore. It's lunacy. So first the governing body goes around dismantling core doctrines and spitting in the face of all those old timers who have spent their entire lives being faithful to Jehovah only to tell them, hey, guess what? You can repent last minute. <laughs> And guess what? You don't need to report hours anymore, you just need to check a little box at the end of the month. And they're still expected to preach with the same seal as before? Get out of here. Here's the truth, Watchtower. You're screwed. <laughs> Let me tell you like it is. Jehovah's Witnesses are less interested than ever in the preaching work. You can just tell. They never come door to door. You can barely see them in the witnessing cards. It's a disaster of your own making. So no matter how many articles you print or how many videos you produce, telling witnesses to get back on the doors and to regain their seal for the ministry, you are fighting a lost battle. All the changes you have implemented and all the time that has passed have only reduced the seal of the common witness. It's obvious to everyone. And I really think there is no going back. The dildo of consequences never arrives, looped. You ponder that too deeply, you'll have a headache for sure. Come, come pregnant. So let me know what you thought of these articles in the comments below, guys. Let me know when you lost the cringe challenge because I love reading your comments. As always, I would like to thank my beautiful Patreon community and my YouTube channel members. Without your financial support, none of this would be possible. So if you would like to gain early access to all my work, please join me on Patreon or hit that join button in the channel. It's only $1 a month and you help keep this channel running. And thank you to everyone who has left the super thanks as well. Take it easy guys, have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower. <laughs> Goodbye little sheep.